Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Riverside Aquatics Complex for Team USA meeting Team Japan in the FINA Intercontinental Water Polo Tournament alongside John Abdu, Greg Meskel here with you for day one of a world-class women's water polo tournament. And John, we start things off here with our final match of day one. Team USA, a younger squad coming together for Coach Adam Krikorian, taking on one of the developing powers in women's water polo in Team Japan. Yeah, this should be a fun matchup to see. Uh, you know, Coach Krikorian has put in a diverse group uh, geographically uh, and age-wise here uh, for this tournament, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they face against Japan tonight. Team USA, to your point, not every player available. Some of the names you know, Maggie Steffens, Anna Kadrid, Rachel Fatal, finishing out their academic year before they get on towards the Super Final and the rest of the summer. So a chance for some younger players, high schoolers, Mackenzie Fisher, Maddie Musselman, Arizona State goalie E.B. Keeve. Great to see some of these names that haven't gotten a chance at the senior level to compete here in a world-class event. Yeah, and that's what this is all about, right? This is a qualification tournament, you know, and uh, Team USA is probably confident they'll qualify for this. So what else can we get out of this? Can we develop some athletes? Can we, can we work on some tactics and work on some things that are going to stay with us all summer and then help lead us to the Pan American Games uh, next year, World Championships, and obviously the ultimate goal, which is defending the gold medal at Rio, in Rio. Opening sprint on the way between USA and Japan. We'll take a quick break, get you back here with the lineups and the start right here from Riverside. Stay close. Welcome back here to the Riverside Aquatics Complex. Team USA and Team Japan getting set to meet here. Opening sprint about to begin. Team USA, of course, led by head coach Adam Krikorian. Right. Come out in the white caps. The Team Japan. And they are led by their head coach, Hidenori Fujiwara, here in the dark caps in the opening sprint. Fought for and, and controlled Japan. by Japan. And let's take a look first at their roster in the goal. Rikako Mura, Midori Sugiyama, Saki Ogawa, Shino Magariyama, Akio Konishi, Moi Nakata, Ayaka Takahashi, Arena Kakichi, Yumi Kojo, Subasa Mori, the captain Misa Shiga, Yumi Nakano, and the backup keeper Yuko Ueda for head coach Fujiwara. And Japan down to this uh, second and left on their USA. shot clock, and they have to turn it off and turn it over. And for Team USA and coach Adam Krikorian, Betsy Armstrong in the goal. Madeline Rosenthal, Marissa Young, Ball Colleen O'Donnell, KK Clark, Priscilla Orozco, Maddie Musselman, Mackenzie Fisher, Jillian Krauss, Kaylee Gilchrist, Ball Elise Williams, Cami Craig, and E.B. Keeve. And one change, Colleen O'Donnell in, Ball Ashley out. Grossman out, out with an injury. Grossman was named to the original roster. And Colleen O'Donnell filling in as an injury replacement announced before Team USA started action here today in this first official day of competition. Nakano. Margariyama. Japan back on offense. Shiga. Shot clock winding down. Lob pulled down by Lob Armstrong. attempt and Armstrong able to take that one down with ease and Team USA will head the other way. The captain Shiga with a center cage spin lob. Uh, fairly low percentage shot in the sport of water polo. Williams. Trying to catch him sleeping. Armstrong was wing. ready for that one. Here's Craig down to two meters. And great defense there from Japan. Yumi Nakano coming over to help. Long outlet pass. And here's a long outlet pass now in transition. Here comes Nakata. Being pressured by Gilchrist. Dealing with Kelly Gilchrist. Yeah, Japanese women seem to be playing without uh, center forward. Uh, nobody going to fill the center zone. All right, now we see someone making the move there, number 11. Ball stolen by Musselman. The captain, Shiga, taking a leadership role, taking it upon herself to, to fill the position. Here's Musselman now after the turnover. Youngest player on this team. Won't turn 16 until next month. So great experience for an up-and-comer that, by all other standards, would probably be on the Cross youth team. Kraus. Kraus on the left-hand wing. Here's Jillian Kraus moving in. Has He's Clark in at two face. meters. She'll take Helps a look in inside to KK Clark. Help defense crash. Ball stolen and by Japan. It's taken away by Japan. So KK Clark getting an opportunity there to post the two meters. And Japan on the double team. And we'll go the other way. Yeah, good defense from the Japanese. And now that you see the ball coming out. Wonderful to see another double exclusion. Double and, exclusion. and that's what we see. And it is. And it goes Number against eight. Jillian Kraus for Team for USA. Japan. And then for Japan, Arena Kakichi. For USA. And they just got knotted up, and you see Kraus heading off. They couldn't untangle each other as the play was moving into the front court. Yeah, good call by the official. Uh, kick both of them out, make the teams play five on five. 
I set the tone early that this physicality is not going to be tolerated. Well done, two Here's years. the entry pass Crash inside for Shiga, guarded ball. there by Elise by Williams, Clark. and Clark comes over for the steal. Armstrong with the ball for and you. Guys. Back to six on six water polo here as Armstrong Long outlet pass. sends it down to Gilchrist. To Gilchrist. Craig moving into two meters. Ordinary call. Ball up top See Cammy Craig starting to set up shop here at two meters for the USA. Gilchrist. Entry into Craig. Has the turn, puts it away. Cammy Craig splitting two defenders, puts it away, and Team USA is on the board. Craig with her first, and USA up one nothing. Was Team USA on the scoreboard first? Well, you can see Craig zero. sent herself up as she was swimming down the pool, kind of directing traffic, moving Maddie Musselman aside, uh, occupying her natural position uh, at two meters, uh, calling for the ball, gets it, and makes a real strong power turn to her right side and puts it away. So nicely done there by Craig, and Japan now will take over. You know, Greg, to your point about Maddie Musselman, you see her outside of the pool. Uh, that girl may not look uh, a day over 13. Uh, now she's in here playing with the world's best water polo uh, women. So uh, impressive of showing for uh, the youngster, Maddie Musselman. Standout for Corona Del Mar High School. Nakano. And here's Japan now on offense. Ball comes near side, Shiga. and an exclusion. exclusion. That'll go against Colleen Colin O'Donnell, who just came on. USA went to their bench. O'Donnell to the penalty box. And a six on five opportunity here for Team Japan. Near side, here's Shiga. Shiga. Now back on the perimeter, Nakata. Armstrong, Armstrong able to knock that Armstrong. down, hits off the crossbar, and they're able to come away with USA it. And ball. USA kills off the power play chance there from Japan. And no look uh, shot from up top from the Japanese lefty. Doesn't fool Armstrong. Uh, never lost focus, ball stayed on the ball, and came up with a save. And then a contra foul in transition, and it'll come back to the Japanese. And credit them for trying some things outside the box. They know that. Just skill level and talent wise, they're they're behind here when it comes to Team USA. So, going to try some different things, see if they can't catch the U.S. off guard. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're going to have a few tricks up their sleeve as this game goes on to try to uh, mm -hmm. remain competitive. Pressured by on Don. the far side, that's Yumi Nakano. Long cross, Long pass. cross pass gets it over to Moy Nakata. Ordinary. 3.40 to go here in the first. A 1-0 lead for Team USA. There's a Rosco defending. Shot clock to three. And ball under is the call. Ball under call. Nice defense there from Marissa Young. And it's back to Betsy Armstrong. So once again, you can see the Japanese women really struggling to find someone to occupy the center position. Uh, maybe nobody on the roster uh, ready to step up and play the spot um, or a little bit of confusion in their front court offense. Inside to Rosenthal, defenders are there. And it's taken away, coming in Saki Ogawa for the steal. And now in transition, an exclusion on Team USA. That's Young going out, the first for her, and here's a look for Japan. Coming inside and had an opportunity, had the advantage, just couldn't get it on goal. Japan getting their power play set up. Now they'll try and regroup here with the six on five. Move into a four two. Sides coming even now. Outside try, score it for Japan and it's Shot Shino Magariyama four. from the outside Magariyama. just as the power play was concluding. Even and it's a one one game with 2.41 to go. So Marissa Young gets excluded in transition, uh, gets caught behind the Japanese. Very fast team. Uh, you know, we talked maybe a little bit about their inexperience uh, and maybe lacking some size at the at the center position. But what they lack in those areas, they're going to beat you in transition. They're going to get up on you. And Marissa Young gets caught behind, and then on the six on five play, Japanese step right in and score a goal. Mackenzie Fisher, uh, youngster in the middle there, misses the cross cage shot block. Back on offense, here's Gilchrist, now Orozco looking inside for Rosenthal, and it's taken away. So Japan has had an answer there on a couple of entries in for Rosenthal. You know, it's interesting. So Coach Kikorian, uh, after the first few minutes of the game, uh, they score the first goal, puts in a whole new lineup of six. So this is the, the, the second lineup for the USA, uh, and you can see they're struggling a little bit with Japan right now. 
And I think this is perhaps a test for this group to see how they work well together. A good challenge for them. Outside attempt, Armstrong there with the block, ranging to the right. And we're under two to play here in the opening quarter. We're even at one. Yeah, big save there from Betsy. And yes, correct, to your point, Greg, you know, all this is done by design. Uh, coach Corian is a uh, uh, experienced gold medal winning coach. He's trying to find some things that work. Inside to Rosenthal, she had the turn, but the double team has been there consistently for Japan as we get a good look from up top of Japan starting their offense. And they've had an answer for Rosenthal the last couple of times she's been posting up. You know, they're, the awareness level in the Japanese is going up. They know that the USA has some strong centers. Uh, they're going to keep their eyes going both ways, That's looking to see what's going pressure. on behind them and uh, effectively crash on the center when the ball gets there. Nakano with the ball for Japan. And Japan pulling it back out. Shot clock to five here, so this might just be a lost possession. Not sure what they're looking for, and they're going to toss it aside. And 1.13 to go here in the first. Yeah, again, they, they're, they're definitely lacking on offense, uh, the Japanese, but they're making up for it by playing uh, fast, uh, quick uh, team defense. Here's Gilchrist. Cross pass, but taken away. Good defense there by Subasa Mori. Able to come away with that steal. And now with under a minute to go, here comes Japan on offense. Yeah, good play by Mori, understanding where the ball was at all times, knew where her, her uh, defender was at all times as well. As we see Pril Priscilla Roscoe coming Roscoe. up with a steal. Roscoe had a great game last night in the win over Australia, an exhibition match, scored a couple of goals and played well defensively. And Coach Corian will call for time with 34 seconds left. In the quarter. We're not at one. And we're all even at one. Well, you can see Coach Corian. Uh, probably not too happy with what this lineup has done over the last three, four minutes. Uh, you know, in the new FINA rules, uh, you're granted one timeout uh, per quarter. So uh, if he doesn't call the timeout in this uh, situation, uh, it goes to waste. So this is uh, a, not only a good opportunity for him to let this lineup know the things they're doing wrong, what they can do better, but also give him a chance to end on a high note. Give him some instruction uh, on this offensive possession, finish the quarter off strong these last 35 seconds, and uh, try to come away with a one-goal lead uh, going into the second. Yeah, as we mentioned, uh, probably a bit of a test here for this group. You're looking at uh, a lot of players here who are making their debut with the senior national team, or maybe this is their second time out. And you look at Marissa Young, someone playing for the first time. Mackenzie Fisher, new. Maddie Rosenthal making her debut with the senior team. Colleen O'Donnell making her debut here with the senior team. So quite a few athletes getting an opportunity here and uh, seeing uh -huh. kind of how they do, how they gel together. Yeah, and don't forget Kelly Gil Gilchrist there too from uh, USC, the uh, uh, professional surfer, yeah. actually. So, yeah. you know, giving water polo uh, a little bit more time here. She's a, got a really eclectic background and uh, diverse skill set. So really neat to see her out here. Four seconds left on the shot clock. Here's Gilchrist oh, over to Orozco. She puts it away. Right, Priscilla Orozco. Connecting Ball for Team USA. Pass. They get Kelly one back. Chris. It's a 2-1 lead with just 11 seconds left here in the first period. So speaking of Gilchrist, there she is, the uh, professional sponsored surfer uh, from Newport Beach. Uh, great lock on the goalie with the ball. Uh, beautiful cross pass over to Roscoe for a catch and shoot. And just seven seconds remaining. Here's Japan with a last chance on offense. Entry inside, ordinary call. Two seconds remain. And they're going to run out of time. time runs out at the end of the first and that'll quarter. bring an end to the first top, period one. after one. A slow start, but Team USA in front two to one. We'll take a break and return to Riverside after this. Welcome back here to the Riverside Aquatics Complex. One period in the books. It's a 2-1 lead for Team USA taking on Japan. This is the first match for the United States in the FINA Intercontinental Tournament here at the Riverside Aquatics Complex, and this all a qualifier for the FINA World League Superfinal. So the top four teams that finish in this tournament will then advance to the Superfinal taking place next month in China, and that's where Team USA wants to make sure that they are going to be. And along with John Abdu, Greg Meskel here with you, poolside. Slow start there for Team USA. We know they were juggling lineups, but still, even that second line, I'm sure Coach Corian believes has the talent to make this a little bit more of a 
difference in the score than what we're seeing here, 2-1 after one. Yeah, you're getting a good look at the staff, at the staff right now. So you have Coach Corian, obviously, uh, won multiple national championships at UCLA, you know, the gold-winning medal head coach from uh, the London Olympics. But, you know, to his right, uh, he's got Dan Klatt, you know, arguably one of the best uh, coaches in America on the women's side, the head coach at UCI, and to his left, uh, you have uh, a former Olympian, Chris Oding, uh, head coach at Long Beach City College. And you can see the three of them really working in unison and doing a lot of teaching and instruction. Uh, and I give them a lot of credit. Calling timeout with 35 seconds left in the first quarter, giving that second line that struggled a little bit, played even water polo. Uh, excuse me, they were down uh, to Japan 1-0 for a three, four-minute stretch. Uh, and giving them a chance to set up an offensive play, score a goal, and use it as a teaching moment. So you can see uh, that the coaching staff understands that they're – you know, most likely going to win this game or having a great opportunity to do so, but that's not enough for them. Winning isn't enough. This is a, a teach teachable moment, uh, and it's an opportunity for them to give them a lot of different athletes playing time and give them a chance to see oh, long-term success, not only this in this tournament, but this summer. Lark for Team USA. And the opening sprint underway here in the second. And, and Japan there first, and you talked about their speed out there winning the sprint to start things off in the second, a fast team. This Japanese national team, and using that to their advantage, to your point earlier, areas where they aren't excelling, maybe shooting the ball. They don't really have much of a two-meter game, although we're seeing now maybe a little attempt here at two meters as they send Misa Shiga down there. Beautiful cross pass here and a good look inside, but great defense there, but they make up for another areas in hustle. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, USA dodges a bullet there. Cami Craig gets beat on the drive. You know, they find inside water a little bit of help defense there to uh, to bail her out. But that's where they're going to beat you. They're going to beat you on the drives. They're going to beat you in transition. So uh, it's actually a really good training and a good test for uh, the defensive skills of Team USA. Over to Kraus. Here's Kraus. Kraus Swings to Clark. Clark. Around to Gilchrist. Shot clock to three. Comes back to Kraus. She'll take a look. And nice shot. save there. Ranging left. That's Rikako Mura. They're able to knock that down. And here comes Japan on the attack. And they'll start things off on the offensive end. About a minute gone by here in the second period. A 2-1 lead for Team USA. Japan pushed out near mid-tank. And they'll dump it and the ball, ball turns over to Japan. USA. They don't force it if they don't have it. If it's if it's not there, they're getting rid of it. They're getting back on defense. Yeah, let's add let's add their uh, positive characteristics. They're they're fast. Uh, they're quick. They play well as a team, and I think they're also pretty smart. Uh, they, I think they they're a wise team. They understand they don't have uh, a lot going on at two meters, and uh, but they're not going to force that shot from the outside. Some teams you'll see without that center, they'll just start throwing up anything to to see if they can get a goal. And the Japanese aren't doing that. So well coached team. Clark moving in. Back to Kraus, three on the clock. Jillian Kraus barred down, but doesn't go all the way in. And Mura able to come back and grab that one before it crosses the goal line. And under six to go here in the first half, and now Japan here on the offensive end. Yeah, let's see. Uh, you know, the Japanese try trying, but uh, uh, you know, with, with not a ton of effort to see if they can. And maybe it's on purpose. Move someone out of the center position. And now, again, trying to drive in. Can, we, can they get Cammy Craig to play some drive defense? And uh, they're making her work right now. And they'll dump it again, or at least a, try a failed pass attempt. And 5.35 to go here in the first half. A 2-1 lead for the United States. And Armstrong with the outlet pass to Clark. Yeah, keep your eye on Misa Shiga, the captain for the Japanese. She's she's marked on uh, Cami Craig right now, making her swim quite a bit, uh, driving her through every time. Uh, Craig moves in. Good strategy by the Japanese to keep this game close. All up top to Clark. Shot clock under 10. Elise Williams to Musselman, looking into Craig. Triple team. Craig gets free, but they'll call a ball under. No goal there for Cami Craig, and we'll go the other way. Yeah, that's one of those unfortunate things in water polo. It's a strong move. It's a great pass by uh, Matty Musselman, but, you know, unfortunately, you can't take the ball underwater. And uh, Cammy Craig needed to make that move a little bit sooner. Here on the near side, Japan controlling. Shiga, Shiga, Shiga handling. Has Craig out on the perimeter with her. Clock winding down. Got Shot clock to five. Here. Entry inside. They'll out. pass it back out. Nothing there on the outside. Shot attempt. And then a field block, but it wouldn't have mattered. 
Too much of a hesitation there on the restart. And then it goes back, back to Armstrong with 4.34 to go. Here's Elise Williams. And now K.K. Clark. A couple of UCLA Bruins working together. Clark moving in, takes a look, tries to go out to Kraus, almost taken away. Shot clock to 11. Kraus takes a look. Clark on the wing, skip shot. And skip shot there, save. Yura coming over to knock it down. I can almost guarantee you that is not what Coach McCorian wanted out of that possession. Um, you know, you had Cammy Craig with good position that could have done a little bit more ball movement to try to get the ball to their center. Here's Agawa now moving in, dealing with Gilchrist, trying to turn her. Ordinary called. Gilchrist on the D. Japan driving through. Ordinary again, shot clock to eight. Ball into two meters. Help defense, ball kicked out. All around five meters, back out on the perimeter. Outside try and wide left of the goal. And it comes back to the United States under four to play. A 2-1 lead for Team USA. Low scoring affair here in this match between the United States and Japan. Yeah, the Japanese are doing a great job of controlling the, the offensive juggernaut that is Team USA. Uh, they have a good, good strategy in place, you know, helping a lot. If you see right now, there's three, four people helping back on Cammy Craig. And again, they draw the ball, ball under ball. call, you know, neutralizing uh, Cammy ball Craig, arguably Japan. the best center in the world, and find themselves back on the offensive attack. Yeah, they're waiting. Craig has a lot of room, and then it credit the speed of, of the Japanese. Once that pass comes in, they are there in an instant to force that ball under. This is the end of the pool where they're struggling to, yeah. to at least get even a clean look. Yeah, they're fast and they're quick. You know, those are obviously two different things. They're fast in transition, but they're quick to react uh, in their front court defense. Exclusion. And an exclusion. Here's a six on five opportunity. This will go against Mark KK Clark. Her first and a six on five chance here for Japan. And on the perimeter, moving into five meters. Come near side. Cross pass. Out top now, shot clock to 10. Look inside, skip shot is in. We're tied at two. Japan hitting on a six on five delivery. Scored for Yumi Nakano. And with 2.51 to go in the first half, the Japanese have tied this game at two. Yeah, big big goal for the Japanese. Uh, and really, they need, they need to convert those power plays. Because if they're not going to get their goals off power plays or in transition, they're certainly not going to get them in the front court offense. So um, to be not, if they're not going to get natural goals, 6-on-5 where it's going to come from. And if you see, it's a really uh, clever play. Uh, bringing the four-position center, having a lefty on the three-post, locking the goalie, getting the ball to your lefty on the three-post, that's a high-percentage look. So uh, Japanese coaching staff doing a good job of keeping their team playing strong team defense uh, and converting on the power play. Rosenthal, two, two, the score. On the wing, shot. Quick attempt there by Orozco. Rebound the save by made, but it Fisher. stays with Fisher and now with Kraus. New shot clock here for Team USA. Here's Colleen O'Donnell Orozco. over to Orozco. She'll take a look again. Another cross pass, almost tipped away. Comes back to Fisher. She puts it away. Oh, Mackenzie Fisher, a near Mackenzie steal there Fisher. for Saki Ogawa. Couldn't hang on, and Fisher does the rest, putting U.S. back in front 3-2. to two. Uh, a little bit sketchy, you know, in the front court offense for Team USA. This is that second line, uh, you know, that didn't perform uh, all too well in the first quarter until the very last possession. Uh, and Orozco forces the pass long across the pool against this five-person uh, zone for Japan. And uh, but Fisher, smart and athletic, gets out the ball out of her hands quickly. Notices the goalie is out of position and puts it away. Japan now on offense. Good look inside. But contra foul is contra the call, ball, 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 trying to set up US. Takahashi, and Armstrong will take over with Armstrong two minutes to go here early. in the first half and a 3-2 lead for Team USA. O'Donnell, O'Donnell throws ahead to Kraus. Kraus getting free, to deals it back out to no one in particular. It's taken away. And in transition, exclusion an exclusion ball. for Team Japan. This one's going to go West. against... O'Donnell. Colleen O'Donnell, that's her second, timeout and a timeout Japan. called by Japan. One forty-six to go here in the first Play half. Resumes. Team USA up 3-2, and John, as far as things are going here for Japan, I'm not sure they could have scripted this better. They are playing great defense, and they're taking a page out of the book. I don't know if maybe a little David versus Goliath here. They're kind of waiting for their opportunity. They're not, they're not rushing anything on offense. They seem to be waiting for that counterattack opportunity. 
that six on five opportunity. And yep. if those things aren't happening, they're not forcing it. Yeah, we used the word wise uh, to char uh, characterize this team earlier. They really are. You know, they're they're being patient. They're playing great defense and waiting for uh, Team USA to make a mistake. And that was a mistake. Uh, you know, Jillian Kraus, you're trying to do too much. You know, forcing the play, uh, tries to make an inside one on one move, and then forces the ball out for a turnover. Uh, and in no other sport than water polo do your teammates pay for your mistakes. So she turns the ball over, and immediately um, uh, there's an exclusion against uh, Team USA trying to recover the ball for her. So again, here we are, uh, six on five opportunity for the Japanese. Uh, and they could tie this game up right here. This is where Team Japan scored their last goal to even things at two. They trail now 3 2, 142 to go here in the first half. On the perimeter. And moves into 4 2. They go far side. Now up top on the perimeter, here's Mori over on the far side. Cross pass coming. Sides coming even. Shot attempt, field block. And ball, ball under is the call ball taken ball away by USA. Team USA. Good defense there from Marissa Young. Able to pull that one back for the United States. And here's Armstrong. Yeah, good defensive top stop for Team USA. Outlets to Fisher. Japan needed that goal to try to tie this. One minute left in the first half. Musselman down on the wing. Here's Musselman. Cross pass to Orozco. Rosenthal in at two meters. Cross pass there to Musselman. Here's Kraus. Takes a look, bar down, and in, scorer for Jillian Kraus. Able to connect, and back-to-back -back goals now for Team USA, and they create a little breathing room here going ahead 4-2 with 58 seconds left in the first half. Uh, Jillian Kraus uh, with a little bit of redemption there. You know, powers the shot in. Nice feed from Maddie Musselman. I've really been impressed uh, this whole tournament with Maddie Musselman's vision and her ability to pass the ball. Jillian Kraus, though, powers the shot, bar down, 4-2 lead for Team USA. And now back to Japan with less than a minute to go here in the first half. On the perimeter. At around 8 meters here, Japan backed up. Just 8 seconds left on their shot clock. Looking inside and too much on that pass. And taken away and Coach Rikorian will call for time with 31 seconds remaining. Here in the first half and a 4-2 lead for the U.S. So again, Greg, FINA rules, you get one timeout per quarter, use it or lose it. Uh, so again, the USA has the ball with 31 seconds left uh, in the half. Use the timeout, may as well. Uh, see if you can draw something up. And uh, if they can convert here, they could put themselves a three-goal lead going into the second half uh, and really put show that uh, the Japanese that they're going to pull this game away and uh, create a bigger cushion. And considering how offensively challenged Japan has been, a three-goal lead could could really be monumental here. Yeah, and when you're when you're playing a team like this, uh, let's say they were, this was a USA Australia game uh, right now, three-goal lead wouldn't mean much, as we saw with China Australia, a game of runs, multiple goals back and forth. When you have a three-goal lead uh, against a team that really doesn't have a center, uh, you you figure out what they're going to be doing offensively, driving around, and if you can make the proper defensive adjustments, you know you could you, they may not score again. There, a good look at USA keeper Betsy Armstrong. And Mackenzie Fisher will get us started. Here's a Rosco. She'll take a look. Gilchrist working inside. Yeah, you see USA coming out in a double post. Uh, Rosenthal and right Gilchrist, post. both USC Trojans, uh, operating in a double post in front of the goal. Shot in the goal. Great look away six. and score Priscilla it Orozco. for Priscilla Orozco, her yes, second. And a 5-2 lead in Orozco USA hitting. She's been on fire to start this week. Go I'm going to say this with the utmost confidence. Priscilla Orozco has the highest water pull IQ of any girl in the water right now. Uh, she is smart. She's experienced. We saw her do it yesterday. Same thing. She's got her eyes on the goal. She's got her eyes all over the pool, sees that the goalie looks away, uh, and puts away a shot that not very many other people can do. And that'll bring and an end to the first, the, half. the first half. Two quarters in the books, USA and Japan five, hanging Japan around, two. making things close, but a 5-2 lead for Team USA. But more of a game than we bargained for here, I think, in the first half. Japan the right there half, for a large right. part of it was for tied at two, led very early on, Shida and making and for exciting Mariano. water polo here. Yeah, some coaches for may say there's USA. no moral victories, but there's a moral One victory at keeping Team USA to uh, five goals for Japan. Uh, they've done a good job on defense. You know, they've conver Fisher, converted on a on a power play. Uh, they they've made a game of this, uh, but may we can see what happens with the coaching staff uh, for Team USA if they can make some adjustments. Uh, what kind of run they can do to start the third quarter here? Here at the half, a 5-2 lead 
for Team USA. Priscilla Orozco scoring two for the red, white, and blue. We'll take a break and come back after this from Riverside. Welcome back here at halftime, along with John Abdu, Greg Meskel here with you. And it's a 5-2 lead for Team USA over Team Japan. John, if you're Team Japan, I imagine the plan you had it really worked as, as best as you could hope. They allowed some late goals there. What adjustments, if any, can they make looking towards the second half? Well, you got to think uh, defense is not necessarily the issue right now. they got to try to score some goals. So if they're making adjustments over there, they're going to make them on the offensive end. You know, can we get more movement? Really continue to put the pressure on the officials and on Team USA to play drive defense, one-on-one uh, -on -one defense, uh, and transition defense. And all these things uh, really are, are tough to defend. Uh, you know, Team USA, is they're, they're, uh, they're kind of on their heels the whole time when you play like this. It's not a traditional uh, style of water polo. It's not a you know, slow down, methodical look for the center. Uh, this is a fast space quick uh, lots of driving lots of movement so uh, again I think if I'm Team Japan I continue to try to put even more pressure on Team USA and on the officials to call more exclusions on this movement that we're doing and then uh, how about Team USA and uh, anything that they can possibly work on they seem to have gotten their offense a little bit better in gear towards the end of the second quarter yeah, I see, you know, again, for them, uh, what, what they're going to be talking about right now is as you uh, get a look at Coach Dan Klatt uh, talking to the team uh, demonstratively over there. And he's talking about uh, probably giving a lot of space on these drives, you know, not, not getting close to anybody uh, up top so that you're not getting excluded on drives giving a lot of water, uh, and if you don't get excluded, you're probably not going to give up a lot of goals here because um, Japan's going to have a hard time scoring uh, natural goals. So can we play that defense and then counter out the other way uh, and exude our dominance in the front court offense? Third quarter on the way. We'll take a quick break and return here from Riverside. Third period set to begin here at the Riverside Aquatics Complex. John Abdu and Greg Meskel. Here with you poolside for Team USA and Team Japan on day one of the FINA Intercontinental Water Polo Tournament. First of its kind this year, bringing together the qualification process for the FINA World League Superfinal to include the Americas and Asia and Oceania. And Team USA controls the opening sprint here to start things off in the third. They've switched ends, United States in the white caps, Japan in the dark. Entry into Kraus and stuffed Shot at the plate. doorstep there. Blocked. Big save from Japan and Rikako Miura, but it'll stay with Team USA. A designed play out of the half from uh, Team USA. If they win the sprint, they were going to post up Jillian Kraus uh, from the one position. Uh, and effective, they get a high percentage shot off, and Kraus going in to post up again. Musselman now moving in. Muscle. She'll give it a look. Like Fire and goal. score. Maddie Number Musselman seven, hitting Musselman from the outside. And that'll be her first of the day and USA a 6-2 lead now for Team USA. Uh, it's really hard not to be impressed with the youngster here. A sophomore in high school, you know, playing playing on the world stage. Uh, we see this a lot uh, in, in women's water polo. Uh, Maggie Steffens, Kylie Neuschel, uh, a lot of girls who get a chance to play at a young age and perform at a high level. And Maddie Musselman's the next one. You know, it's clear. She gets up high in, on her legs, goes cross cage, top shelf, puts it away. Nice feature on Musselman and Mackenzie Fisher in the Riverside mm -hmm. Press Enterprise talking about their opportunities here as younger players and both of them as you might expect thrilled to be here happy to be a part of this and yeah. and what they can do here but also how they can apply this to their upcoming high school seasons and their club and everything else yeah and big big credit to their their coaches you know ethan damato uh for mckenzie fisher ross sinclair uh for uh, uh maddie musselman you know they're doing a good job back home and they could really use this experience to inspire the rest of their teammates the rest of their uh club system uh can all look up to what these girls are doing and hopefully they can continue to keep uh keep going in this direction shot clocked one and it's about to expire and before that japan comes away with the steal and they'll get things going on their offensive end 6.17 to go here in the third. A 6-2 lead for Team USA. Japan now taking a look to attack. Here's Magariyama. And a contra foul suit grab there as KK Clark got tangled up at around two meters with Ayaka Takahashi. And it will come back to Team USA. Here comes the United oh, States now on offense. Ball. Kraus gives a look. Gilchrist. Goes cross pass Gilchrist. Oh. The lob try. Beautiful touch oh, 10, from Kelly Gilchrist. Gilchrist. 
hitting on her first and a right, few hezzy fakes and then just gave him the USA old off-speed pitch two. and put that one right over the keeper's head. Yeah, nice touch there by Kelly Gilkes to put it away. Team Japan still in a heavy zone, so helping quite a bit uh, back on Kami Craig and the and the centers for uh, uh, Team USA. And uh, you can it was clear that that was discussed at halftime. They crossed the ball, you know, attacked where the help is coming from, and put the goal away. And a 7-2 lead now. Team USA offense getting in gear here in the third and starting to extend themselves to a bigger lead over Team Japan. Another scrum at two meters and. This will be an exclusion. That's going to go against the United States, and that'll be on Cami Craig. Japan and that'll be her first, and a six on five here for Japan. So Yumi Nakano attacks uh, Cami Craig on the drive. It's clear that Team Japan is making an effort to swim Cami Craig all around the pool and see if they can keep her from doing what she does best, which is uh, post up in front of the cage and dominate. And a nice save there from Armstrong on the attempt. And Outside of an early Craig goal, they've done a pretty decent job of kind of neutralizing her. A lot of ball under calls and then just making her work, to your point, having yeah, her swim all over the place. Yeah, there's really not much you can do to stop Kami Craig. This is one of those few things that Nakano. you can do, and they're doing it well. And Japan goal. responds with a goal. Yumi Number Nakano 12. with her Yumi second. Nakano. And Japan gets one back. They trail now 7-3. Seven seven. So Yumi Nakano draws the exclusion uh, on Kami and then puts away the goal. So uh, very interesting to see this tactic come into play. She's a tough matchup. You know, she's almost unguardable uh, in any position in the pool. So, uh, you know, going this route, it's a high-risk maneuver. Uh, clearly, it may not win you the game, but it uh, gives you an opportunity to uh, neutralize one of the best players in the world. Three minutes gone by here in the third. A 7-3 lead for Team USA. Japan stopping the USA run with a goal there. And now they'll be back on offense. Craig will head on down to two meters. Here's Kelly Gilchrist. Gives a few looks. Cross pass there to Musselman. Here it is, Jillian Krauss posting up again alongside Cammy Craig. And Krauss, big sweep shot attempt there. Yeah. And it's knocked down. Another save there. And now the long outlet pass for Japan going the other way. You know, small advantage for Japan here in transition, but they give it up by uh, not, taking, not being aware of it and passing the ball backwards. Outside try from deep. Uncharacteristic there of what we've seen from Japan all match long. Usually if they didn't have something, they haven't tried it from distance. They've dumped the shot or they've tried to get something going to the goal there. And that went off the mark and now leads the other way to Craig wheeling inside. Deals it off to Gilchrist. Another lob, another score for Kaylee Gilchrist. And it's an 8-3 lead right now for Team USA. And Pick your poison for Japan right there. Craig probably could have shot that ball, decided to go for the more open player in Gilchrist, and she doesn't disappoint. Well, that's what makes her um, the best center in the world, one of the best players in the world overall. Uh, she has the wherewithal to absolutely dominate her defender, turn to the goal, and while she's facing the goal, almost no look that pass off her wrist to a wide open Kelly Gilchrist for the goal. Uh, but you can see why Japan has paid so much attention uh, on the offensive end uh, to try to frustrate and uh, move around and annoy Kami Craig because when she's comfortable, that's what she can do. Beautifully done there by the United States and they're ahead 8-3, to 4-8 or eight to go here in the third and what was a close game here in the first half has now decidedly gone in favor of Team USA. Japan trying to rally. We've talked a lot about what we're seeing defensively from Japan. What are we seeing from Team USA that is giving Japan such trouble in offense? Well, you know, when you have a team that doesn't have a center, all you really have to do is, is, is give a lot of space, let them move, try not to get excluded on the move. And when you give a lot of space, as we see now uh, with Mackenzie Fisher on the help, you have your teammates to help you. You know, I'm going to give, give some water, I'm going to give them some space, uh, and there's not really that much space to go to. If I have my teammates to help me and everyone's got their head on a swivel, uh, I'm able to play good defense. And Team USA has done a good job of that so far. And this is probably a nice definition for water polo players that are watching and wondering, why are we always trying to get our two-meter person involved? Because mm. this is what happens when you don't have someone kind of devoted to that center spot. Correct. 8-3, to three, the lead. Three seconds on the shot clock. Here's Young, and she'll dump it aside. Not going to be able to get a shot off there as the shot clock was set to expire with 3.14 to go here in the third. Yeah, you, Greg, you mentioned the importance of having a strong center if you want to be successful in this sport. And uh, you're watching Team USA. Team USA is the defending 
Olympic gold medal team and they have some of the best centers they have the best centers in the world uh you know with cammy craig you know not here still in school uh finishing up before they uh go to world league is you know annika drees uh you, you traditionally have the best centers in the world on team usa and so uh that's what gets them the gold medal uh, and right without it japan struggling a little bit so field block there on the shot attempt and Someone else also out here, usually on the team, Melissa Seidemann, who yep. is kind of that versatile defender, center type player. Mm -hmm. She can all she's an all around. She can do both. Um, and here's Marissa Young, who plays center for her college team. Strong post up there, but gets blocked. Member of the Cal State Northridge Matadors, made it to the Big West final this year before falling to UC Irvine. You know, the NBA playoffs are going on right now. You're not going to see a team win a championship without, you know, a strong inside presence. You know, we see the Spurs dominate last night with Tim Duncan, arguably the best power forward in the history of the game. And uh, that's what this is about. It's inside out. If you have an inside presence uh, in water polo, your perimeter players have a better chance to score. Shot clock about to expire. Japan tosses it aside. It'll come back to the United States with two minutes to go here in the third. Eight to three. The lead now for Team USA. Here's Priscilla Orozco. Clark. KK Clark controlling. Rosenthal in at two meters. Off to Young. Young. Rosenthal in at two meters. And now Fisher going to try and post up here. O'Donnell gives it in. Fisher the turn, the shot, and Japan. And Miura getting just enough on that ball to slow it down from going in. And they'll take over with 1.30 to play in the third. So that was the obvious adjustment by uh, the Team USA coaching staff. We're going to try to post some other people up, uh, and they've been using this one position. Uh, Jillian Krause, now Mackenzie Fisher, taking in some mismatches from the, uh, the one spot and seeing if they can uh, score some goals from there. Timeout called here by Team Japan. 126 to go, and I imagine while Coach Corian wasn't maybe thrilled with how things went in the first half, there's got to be some level of enjoyment in the fact that this Japan team has forced him to game plan a little bit differently. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is uh, a great test and a great opportunity for uh, Team USA. The last thing you want to do is prepare for this tournament, you know, put all this time in uh, uh, practicing your tactics and your, and your technical skills and bringing these young girls in and then not getting a game out of it. You know, this, you want to be tested. You want to be challenged. And so uh, you're absolutely right, Greg. Uh, this is a, an opportunity for the coaching staff to teach uh, these girls how to adapt uh, in international competition to uh, various styles of play. Especially because you could probably have seen the last 30 Team USA games and not in one of them were they sending a second person like a Kraus or a Fisher down to post there, but they've had to battle against what Japan is presenting. Yeah, and this is a little bit of a chess match, a little bit of a poker game, right? You don't want to always show all your cards. So can you, th can you throw some different things out there so that the competition can't always predict what you're doing? And uh, that's also part of what uh, uh, Coach Corian's doing. 115 to go. And we'll see an exclusion called. Exclusion. This is going to go against the United States, Japan. Priscilla Orozco. And she'll go out with her first and a six-on-five opportunity here for Japan. Yeah, Orozco getting caught with her hands down on the drive again. Jap Japan, the Japanese are uh, going to do Shot their best to draw those exclusions on the drive and earn power play opportunities and Subasa score again. Mori. And Subasa Mori connecting on the six-on-five. They get one back, and they cut it to an 8-4 advantage for Team USA with less than a minute to play here in the third. You know, a couple of lefties on this Japanese team uh, make their power play strong and, and effective. So, Here's Colleen O'Donnell of the USC Women of Troy. Fisher. Entry inside. Exclusion. Looking to post up Young. She'll draw an exclusion. It will go against Nakata Moy Nakata. Her first. And here's a Rosco with less than 40 seconds to play. So fairly predictable uh, for Team USA's part. They post up the one position again, this time effectively. Wow, power shot. Nicely done there by Colleen O'Donnell, hitting on the six on five. Colleen O'Donnell. Quick release and goes skip shot into the upper corner. It's a 9-4 lead for the United States. The Japanese goalkeeper had no chance on that one. Strong upper corner skip shot from Colleen O'Donnell. But again, Team USA showing the tactic of getting in that secondary post-up. Uh, and frankly, for the first time uh, since the, the use of that tactic in the second half, it's been effective. Drew the exclusion and scored the goal. And we'll see Elise Williams come on, replacing Marissa Young. 
And now Japan back on offense. And about a one second differential shot and game clock as we wind things down here in the third. And a bad pass there. Orozco comes in to take over. And Ten seconds left. Here's Team USA. Shot clock is off. The United States can hold for the final shot here of this third period. And it looks like they're just going to hang on to it and wind things down. And that'll bring an end to the third. After three, Team USA has asserted themselves. They are in command over Japan. Nine to four. We'll take a break and return with the fourth quarter here from Riverside. And we're back here with the fourth period on the way. 9-4, the advantage for Team USA. John Abdu, Greg Meskel here with you. Poolside at the Riverside Aquatics Complex. Great venue for water polo and great support here from the Riverside community in helping put this event on. An eight-nation event that runs through Sunday here. Day one, wrapping up with Team USA appearing to be on their way to a victory. Ahead 9-4 here with eight more minutes to go. and It's been a strong third period. It took a little bit of uh, something extra for Team USA to kind of get going here in this match. It was a little slow go in that first half, and they've got to figure it out here in the third, and they really blew things open here, building a five-goal lead. Yeah, as you mentioned, Greg, you know, it, it, they, it was a little bit extra effort, a, a little slow start for them, but uh, it's all by design. Uh, coaching staff decided they wanted to do uh, some different things. Uh, they wanted to try some different tactics on offense, try to you know, play everybody, uh, try a couple of different lineups. Uh, so that's what's going to be the natural outcome uh, of that experimentation. Fourth and and opening sprint round. underway. One by KK Clark. Clark. There by hand. Takes it for Team USA, and they'll start things off. Musselman. Here's Matty Musselman. Craig moving into two meters. Gives it off to Jillian Krause on the near side. Krause. Cross pass Krause there to Elise Williams. To Gilchrist. Kelly Gilchrist and Williams. Craig posting backhand from Gilchrist. Blocked partially off blocked off the post and then an exclusion, exclusion as Gilchrist was dragged from behind by Ayaka Takahashi. The penalty box. Power play. Musselman skips Attempt by Musselman. Rebound, rebound Krause. A few fakes. She fires it over the goalie's head. Nine, and scored for Jillian Krause. That's her Puts second. Team USA ahead 10-4. 731 left in the fourth. Yeah, USA fortunate 10. bounce of the ball for Kelly Gil Gilchrist. Jillian Strong post four. up from the, the five spot. Uh, makes a good move, but gets the rebound and draws the exclusion and uh, sets up the power play. Jillian Krause, nice shot from one. And now on the other end. Another exclusion. exclusion and Japan's going to get a chance Power here. Japan. Jillian Krause will go out. Six on five opportunity. That's the second exclusion on Krause. Mori at the left-hander spot. There it is, that Japanese movement. The fast movement, the driving. That's what's going to cause uh, the officials to put a little more pressure on them and call some exclusions. Nakata, Mori, back to Nakata. Point. A couple field of quick passes Musselman. on the perimeter. Musselman bats that down Mori. with a field block. Yeah. Great field block by Musselman. Sides coming even now. Oh, outside try. Deflected off the post. By Armstrong. Clark clears that one out. Sides had already come even, so there was no one there to come out of the exclusion area to take that one, but it works all the same for Team USA. Yeah, a little bit of a panic uh, from Clark there. You know, they had, they had it covered. Could have left the ball with Armstrong, but either way, great five-man defense by Team lane. USA, Keeps and uh, they're on the attack. Minute and a half gone Clark. by here in the fourth. Craig in at two meters. Here's Williams moving in. Time Gilchrist shot clock to two. Into Krause. The backhand Blocked. denied and again. Rebound control. Miura. Ball under call. And a ball under is called. We'll go the other way. And now Japan looking to get things started. Krause has had two goals today, but Miura has had, had uh, quite a few nice stops on um, shots in close. Pressure by Krause. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see Team USA in the third quarter decided they wanted to post up from this, this wing at the one position. And now in the fourth quarter decided to post up from the opposite wing from the five position. You saw it with Gilchrist, then you see it with Kraus again. Great steal Armstrong. from Gilchrist to Armstrong. Back out to Gilchrist. Pass near side. Here's Musselman. Looks inside to Clark for the one-timer. KK Clark delivers on the beautiful look from Musselman. It's an 11-4 lead for Team USA. A yeah, great counterattack from Team USA. Musselman with a good look. KK Clark, USA great athlete, man. great hands, always aware where the ball four. is. You know, puts her arm up, calls for it, slams it home. 
5.52 left in the fourth, an 11-4 lead. Team USA in control here. And Musselman doing a nice job setting up Clark on that one. Yeah, Musselman showing uh, above average vision for her age. Uh, she really sees the pool well. That's a tough to look USA. for a lot of people to see, and uh, Armstrong with impressive the ball. that she saw that. And a contra foul here on Japan. It turns over, and it'll come back to Team USA. Armstrong looking for a release. Armstrong with the outlet, throws it ahead to Williams. Here's Kraus, now Clark. Williams at point. Williams takes a look, Down to 10. goes over to Craig. Over to Craig, out on the wing. Shot. Oh, man. Craig <laughs> from the outside. Doesn't get a chance to do it very often. Skips that one home. And Cammie Craig with her second of the day. And Team USA cruising now ahead 12-4 to four with 5.16 to go. You know, that's like watching uh, Shaquille O'Neal uh, put up a three-pointer. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's seeing Cammie Craig outside of her natural habitat, you know, uh, weak side on the wing. Um, but with a lot of confidence, she just picks up, winds up, brings the ball way behind her head, uh, and skips it and powers it home. That was fun to see. I'm sure she would argue that she's better from the perimeter than Shaq is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you're right. It's it's such a thing where the centers are always posting up. They If they ever shoot from that distance, something must have gone wrong. Yeah. But Craig able to make it look easy. You know, sometimes a lot of times we saw this with the Australian uh, centers, like Beadsworth, right? She was a, is a powerful center, but she put in three uh, perimeter goals in the fourth quarter in the game against China earlier today. So, you know, all joking aside, sometimes your centers are your best shooters because they have the, the strongest shot. Here's a Rosco. Rosenthal setting up at two meters. Musselman controlling. Goes across to Young. Shot clock to nine. Musselman, skip shot. Off the post, she can track down her own rebound. rebound. It'll stay with the United States. Here's Priscilla Rosco swinging around to Young. O'Donnell posting. They go inside, but a push off there on the perimeter on Young. And then in transition, Young with the daily double here. She'll go out on the exclusion. And a six on five for Japan. Yeah, double whammy there uh, for uh, Marissa Young, but gaining a lot of experience here in you know, her first international competition uh, for Team USA. See if the Japanese can convert on the power play. 4-12 to go in the fourth, 12-4. The United States is ahead. Sides coming even now. Quick look, partially field blocked, and it's batted back to Armstrong. She controls it, and the sides come even as Team USA takes over with under four minutes to play. And the United States in a comfortable 12-4 lead. You know, a young, inexperienced lineup in right now uh, for Team USA. The anchor, really, Priscilla Orozco, uh, the most experienced player in the water. Uh, but you see a lot, of, a lot of youngsters in there right now. Marissa Young posting up again from the five position. Here's Fisher. She'll have to shoot it. Fires from the outside. Save made there by Miura. And it's back to Japan. Fisher coming off of a hand injury. So good to see her back in action here. Ordinary call as Japan gets things set up. Shot clock to 10 for Japan. Ordinary. And again, five seconds left. Orozco there with stifling defense. One on the shot clock, and Orozco gobbles up that entire possession there with a big field block to take it away. Yeah, good defense from Priscilla. You see Team USA countering out here. Matty Rosenthal setting up shop at two meters. Here's Musselman around to O'Donnell. Musselman looking inside, and that one taken away. And a tangle. In the backcourt. And Mackenzie Fisher, Fisher will get excluded. Go and she got knotted up there with Japan. Kikichi. And well, then a timeout called by Japan. Play when play resumes. So Team USA continuing to force the issue, posting up the five position on nearly every possession uh, here in the fourth quarter, uh, this time using the uh, youngster Mackenzie Fisher 
tries to make her move, uh, and then you know gets excluded in transition. Two thirty-eight remaining in the fourth, and a twelve-four lead. Team USA in comfortable control of this one. And now just in a position where I think both teams are kind of looking towards future matches and seeing if they can develop some positive habits here as they get into the rest of group play. Remember, two more games for group play, and then you get into your quarter semis and final day of action this Sunday. So an opportunity here to perhaps close things out with a, a positive note. No matter what you do, there's there's no time to enjoy it or stew over it. you got to get right back out there. Yeah, this is uh, all day, every day you're thinking about water polo and thinking about Sunday. Uh, the USA women, same with the Japanese women here, they're going to be looking their eyes and set no towards way. how well can we finish at the end of this tournament come Sunday. Japan on the attack Four. here on the six on five. Ball back to side to side, now up top. Nikata. Around the perimeter. Sides coming even. Score it for Japan. Nicely done there from the far side. Able to connect. Number eight, Arena Kikichi. Kikichi hitting on her first. Arena and Kikichi. Japan gets one back. 12 to 5. 2-12 to, to go in the fourth. You talked about the, the water polo all day, every day. You've obviously coached in situations where mm. you have a game and you're going to have a game the next day. Yeah. How do you process those games, win or lose? Do you try and just give a quick review and then Say forget about it, we're moving on? Yeah, I, mean, I think uh, one advice I got from a, a mentor or coach a long time ago is not to have long team meetings after games in situations like this. Oh, great play by Team by USA. Number two, on the inside Madeline there, Rosenthal. Maddie Rosenthal connecting, getting her first, and USA oh, gets the one back with 155, 155 to go. Left in the contest. Yeah, good, uh, good vision from the youngster uh, Mackenzie Fisher. Gets five. a dry pass to her center, uh, able to catch and shoot Maddie Rosenthal with the goal. Yeah, to that point, Greg, you know, I think from a coaching perspective, you want to uh, not dwell on games. You want to have a short memory. You know, if uh, you're successful, you don't want to spend a whole uh, post-game meeting talking about how great you are. Uh, and you also don't want to, if you lose or aren't successful, you don't want to spend uh, a whole post-game meeting or the next day just uh, lamenting uh, on the, your lack of success. It's a short memory. Uh, every day is a new day, and you got to attack each game as if it's the most important Field game of the block. tournament. Shot attempt there, field blocked. I imagine that's kind of the philosophy all these teams will take. These are all teams that have experience playing in multi-day international tournaments. As we get to 1.15 to go in the match, and Team USA ahead 13-5. to Maddie Musselman with the off arm, giving a shove to the chest there, and the official right on top of the action calling the contra foul. And now into the attacking end, here comes Japan. And their contra foul exposure called on Japan, so it'll go the other way, and Team USA takes over. Final minute. So almost uh, guaranteed when we see a contra foul in transition, we're <laughs> going to see another contra foul uh, giving the ball back to the original team. It's almost like the team that gets the first foul can't believe their good fortune. They're on top of the world, untouchable, and then they commit a foul. Under a minute to go. Here's a Rosco. Great look inside. Yeah, Score it for Marissa Young. Three, Marissa Young. And she's on the board, oh, and Team USA cruising here in the fourth. Nice pass there from Orozco, and a 14-5 lead here for Team USA. Young on the board for the United States. Yeah, beautiful look from Orozco. She has, like we talked about, great vision and great experience uh, and great ability to pass the ball. Uh, good for Mercy Young's confidence. Get on the board, uh, get a goal early in this tournament. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how much she contributes as, as this goes on, but that's great for her psyche, great for her confidence. So 25 seconds remain. Likely final possession here for Japan in this one. Shot clock down to six. Inside of water, but Armstrong is there to tap it away, and Young with the steal, and Team USA will take control. With 10 seconds remaining, the shot clock is off, and they can run out the clock on this one. After a slow start, a convincing opening day victory for Team USA as they top Japan 14 to five. Japan 5. And they move to 1-0 in group play. Japan falls to 0-1. And, and, and a quick look at the stats here for Team USA is, is a balanced effort. Two goals for Priscilla Orozco. Two for Jillian Krause. Two for Cammy Craig. Two for Kelly Gilchrist. And then Mackenzie Fisher, Maddie Musselman, KK Clark, Colleen O'Donnell, Maddie Rosenthal, 
Marissa Young all getting in the mix. So at the end of the day, John, very balanced effort here for Team USA, and they figure out Japan's plan of attack, counter it, and come away with the win. I think the Team USA coaching staff of uh, Kikorian, uh, Klatt, and Oding, they're going to be happy with this. You know, this is exactly what they wanted um, out of this opportunity early in the tournament. Not only do you get the win, but, but you get a diverse uh, learning opportunity for all of your athletes, uh, and you get to play uh, essentially everybody but your backup goalie uh, to gain that experience and set yourself up for success like we talked about. The most important game is Sunday. Uh, so did you exhaust a lot of resources here on Tuesday to get to that point? No. So I think this is a success for uh, Team USA. Nicely done here by the United States. As they take this one, a convincing win, 14-5. to It was tied at 1.22. Japan did lead this thing 1-0, so the USA had to work a little harder than perhaps expected to come away with the victory. But they take it 14-5. to We're going to step aside now, take a quick timeout, come back here and talk with a member of the winning Team USA. So hang around. We'll be coming back here at poolside at the Riverside Aquatics Complex. Stay with us. All right, welcome back here at Poolside. We're joined with Priscilla Orozco from Team USA in the victory over Japan. Priscilla, a nice game for you. Tell me about you. this game against Japan. And it started off slow. You guys were tied 2-2. How did it change when you were able to open things up? Yeah, um, at first it was kind of tricky. I mean, none of our, none of the team has ever played Japan before, so we were looking forward to it. Um, but they played well at first, and our coach made adjustments, and we followed through with them, so we were able to get a lead on them. When's the last time you played against a team that didn't work in a center and pretty much drove you guys all over the pool, and you had to really try some different strategies? Yeah, well, I mean, coming from a club when I was young, we our centers weren't very big, so I was kind of, I had a edge over some girls in that sense. I, I knew how to play some drive defense, but it was still tricky. I mean, I'm not used to it, but um, it's been a while. <laughs> And how about your game out here? I know you had a nice game last night in the exhibition over Australia. You score a couple of games or a couple of goals here tonight. You make yeah. a couple of steals. I know you're one of those folks where you've been in the system, but you're trying to get to that next level here. Yeah. What has it been like for you as you as you try and crack into that rotation here? Yeah, well, it's been a challenge. I mean, but it's one that I'm looking to step, you know, into and mm -hmm. able to like just take every opportunity I get and um, you know in the mornings just preparing for the game in the mornings is crucial so i'm really taking it serious in that sense and this is obviously just day one of a long week you're right back at it tomorrow yeah. what's been the talk around the team what are kind of your expectations as you look ahead to this long week of water polo all culminating on sunday well we really want to you know set the tone from the beginning as a team and because um, we know our harder games are going to come towards the end of the tournament so we want to set a really like strong fast tone and at the um for these first few games so that's been our team goal for this tournament and uh a lot of younger players on this team a couple of high schoolers in uh maddie muslin and mackenzie fisher you obviously have have already been through the college game what is it like being one of the one of the veterans so to speak with so much new young talent on this group yeah well it's been fun i mean i get to play with some olympians and i get to play with some high really good high school players so it's it's just been a mix but it's been working out and it's been fun and we're all learning from each other. I mean, veterans and young girls. So it's, it's pretty awesome. Priscilla Orozco, two goals in the win tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, we'll take another quick time out, come back and wrap things up. Stay with us here in Riverside. Hi, everyone. Welcome back poolside here. Day one of the FINA Women's Intercontinental Tournament is in the books. John Abdu, Greg Meskel here with you. We had all the games for you here today from the Riverside Aquatics Complex. And, John, a great day of water polo to get things started off here. Let's look back at our first game here. Brazil, a 12-2 winner over Venezuela. And in that first game, started off a little bit slow, and, and Brazil just kind of showing the talent gap there between Venezuela, able to pull away in that one. Yeah, you could tell it was the first game of a long tournament. Both teams uh, conserving some energy, uh, knowing that this is a you know six-day tournament. They got to play their best at the end. Uh, but Brazil showing that they're uh, uh, going to be ready for uh, hosting the Olympics in 2016. Isabella Chipini, three goals there to lead the Brazilian attack. Our next game from there, Canada, Kazakhstan. This was one we thought was going to be a more competitive game than it ended up being. It was close early on, and then Canada. Just blew things open. 21-7, to they win it. Huge game for Monica Eggins, and the Canadians off to a good start. Yeah, Canada showing that they're really one of the deepest and most talented teams in the world. Uh, they're talented at every position. Uh, and like you said, Monica Eggins, an absolute offensive juggernaut. 
uh, but also showing that they had some depth at the center position with three different centers they used today that were all effective against Kazakhstan. And for sure, our game of the day, our third game, Australia meeting China, two of the top teams in the world here in Riverside, and it ends up being a 13-10 win for Australia, but that game really could have gone either way. You saw a balanced effort from both sides. Sun Yating for China, just amazing drawing exclusions, drawing penalties. And then for Australia, they go to Gemma Beadsworth. They make a lot of things happen on their end and able to come away late with victory. Yeah, that was a lot of fun uh, to watch. That was just two talented teams scoring a lot of goals. You know, to have 23 goals total uh, in the game uh, was an exciting for all the fans here and for us to watch and hopefully for everybody online uh, to see as well. And then we close things out in the nightcap, USA and Japan. The score will not be indicative of what kind of game this was, especially in the first half. 14-5, to USA wins it. But if you go back to that first half, first Japan left, uh, led 1-0. Then it was a 2-2 game for a moment there. USA went ahead 3-2. But an interesting strategy from Team Japan really kind of flummoxed the USA early on. They didn't, they didn't really know what to do. They made some poor passes, things of that nature. And Japan stayed alive. And then second half, USA just took over. Yeah, I think there was a very methodical approach uh, taken by Team USA uh, into this game and also by Team Japan. It was interesting to see the tactics uh, used on both sides. Uh, the Japanese uh, going full force, uh, you know, attacking uh, USA on the drives and on the movement, trying to get Cammy Craig in foul trouble. Uh, and Team USA trying some different things, some different lineups. So I think both teams can walk away from uh, tonight's uh, game with uh, some hope for the future. So four games in the books here on day one from Riverside. All the action returns tomorrow. Four more games starting at 3 p.m. Pacific time. For John Abdu, Greg Meskel signing off here from the Riverside Aquatics Complex. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.